Okay, so the recording is on. This is Design 350. It's our lecture. It's Tuesday, December 7th. We're on a Google Meet. And this is week 16. We're like down to the end. And so it's your final portfolio presentation. And there's a partial submittal due on Thursday, which you shouldn't have really too much trouble doing because you've already gotten a partial submittal done because we're finishing out one of the submittals you've already done. So this one should be a no-brainer, but you can get some extra work in. And then next week, there's no classes. And Thursday is your last day to turn in work. So if you have any late work or anything like that, you can turn it in. And that's the last day to turn in your final exam. I'm going to try to get grading done on the 17th. So your grade may pop out pretty quick. Um, we have until January 4th. So um, if I don't get it done here... It'll probably be like January 3rd or January 4th, but I'm going to really try to get your grades done here. <clears throat> so uh, get all any late work in here and your final exam, final submittal. Of course, you can do it anytime in here. You don't have to, you don't have to wait. Okay, so let's take a look at what we've got for this week. Um, you've got a 50% progress check due. It will be Revit. Um, I suppose you could, you could, if you've been doing it in something else, you could, that'll be okay. I'm not really recording the lab sessions. Um, we will have a lab session tomorrow too, but it's really just questions and answers. There's, there, there's nothing new at all. I do have a little playlist for you that so far consists of what good is your portfolio. So this is a quick little one that, that lets you know really the key elements of your portfolio and what they're for. And this goes for any class. Any design tech class, landscape class, art class, interior design class, you name it. These are the guts of a portfolio. And if you keep this stuff in mind, regardless of how you formatted it, you'll have a useful portfolio. And I touch on the fact that it's not fixed. Your portfolio is always changing. Now, you might not go back and redo one from a specific class, but your overall portfolio will always be changing. So that's there, and I'll, I'll put the two lectures in here also. Um, here are the final exam requirements. My calendar, and, and I don't really have any samples for you. Okay, and so I just say, there's the requirements, there's the requirements. Pop your, I call it a 50% or progress check number one, is due on Thursday. Thursday, Thursday, Thursday. It's different than usual because that's our last day of instruction. And I know some professors do it, but it's really not appropriate to have instructional assignments due during finals. And it's not really appropriate to have a final due during instruction. So I kind of say, okay, 50% progress check due on the last day of instruction. And then the real deal one is due at the final exam. Now, they're all worth the same amount. It's still just worth your 50% is worth 10 points. Your final exam is worth 10 points. It's no more powerful to your grade than any other one other than if you don't turn it in per my, per my um, syllabus, you go down a grade. 
So be sure to turn something in so that your automatic great A that you've achieved so far remains at an A. And the assessment rubric is just a little bit different. Okay, so now I'm going to grade you on scope for the breadth. Have you addressed all the subject matter that, that's been asked for? In other words, is it a full uh, submittal? And you have the depth. For each piece of subject matter, do you have all of the significant details for that? And then for application, is it appropriate to the design, uh, to the concepts being addressed? And so that would be, you know, have have you, you know, you've got all the details addressed. Here are, are they appropriate to the design concepts that we're being asked for you to do? Not kind of your own thing. And visual presentation, clear, concise, focused, industry standards. You're using a presentation template and you've all been meeting that perfectly so far, so I don't expect any difficulties from this. So, so that's how you get, and check this out. If I put an X here, and an X here, and an X here, and an X here, it adds, I mean, this is so cool. I can do that. Um, and, th and that's what you're going to see for your grades. You'll, you'll see that filled out, and I'll just, you know, take whatever grade is here and pop a snip into the um, submittals. Uh, so there we go. All right, so that's what's up. I'll go over it one more time. This week is your final portfolio presentation. Week 16 is your... 50%, so, oops, it's right here, is your 50% submittal. And it's due on Thursday at 11.59 p.m. And during finals week, there's no class. But on the last day of finals, that's when you turn in your work. Or before. Okay, so let's take a look and see what you might do. So I've got three of them here. Oh. Let's take a look and see what the requirements are. That would be a great idea. Here they are. Pretty straightforward. So you've been given a midterm exam for survey. So I don't need to check your survey skills. Land planning, you've just done a bunch of submittals, and we haven't really done one complete full one yet. So your final exam will allow you to demonstrate that fully. So recognizing that you've made significant portions of three different land planning assignments, and with all of them, you have done the whole thing. Now I want you to apply all those skills to one complete land planning proposal. So here's what you do. Okay, this is your final portfolio. Choose one of the assignments that you've partially completed. Number one, project one, project two, or project three. And using the skills that you learned in all three, complete the proposal of your choice. So as an example, in number one, you skipped the water and electrical utility plans because you didn't know how to do them. But in two, you learned how to do them. So you could go back and do the water and utility plans for number one and really finish that one out. Okay, or for number two, uh, we didn't really do much in the way of details and things like that. And 
So there were a few parts that we didn't really pay attention to. So you could go back and do those. Uh, for, for instance, we didn't do um, a couple of the, um, the middle letters. We didn't do the uh, AFFH letter or some of the local community support letters and things like that. So you could go back and spend some time to wrap those ones up. And in number three, we just take took a part of, you know, just took three sheets. But if you want to, significant portions are there. Your, your um, uh, county map, area map, and vicinity maps are essentially done. Um, there's just a little bit of work to be done to change some of the other ones. So, so you could do those if you felt like it. So it'll be up to you. Pick one of the three projects. Include all pages that were originally provided in the land planning template. Add or modify detail pages as appropriate. Perform all the calculations as appropriate for that project. And include a letter of intent for that one. And, and any supporting cover letters where appropriate. Okay? So, so basically, it's just fill one out the rest of the way. All the pages should be combined into one single PDF. The drawings should be 11 by 17 landscape. And any letters you can leave as 8.5 by 11 or 11 by 17. And I'm saying printed, um, but that that's digital, right? It's printed to PDF. So I'll say printed, exported, or plotted. There we go. And I do want your original Revit file for the project. Just like you've done. So here's your timeline. You'll have the end of final exam period to complete it. But there is a progress check on the last day of instruction. That's Thursday. And that's worth 10 points. And the complete submittal is due the 16th. I think that's the right date. Yep, that's the right date. Okay, and I showed you the rubric. So that's all what we've talked about. So that's your final exam requirements. And and I think they're pretty straightforward and you can just sort of like go to town. Of course, if you can't remember how to do something, ask me, make a meeting. Um, I will I will be available. So let's see what my avail is. I'm not super available. Okay, so like the rest of today is used up. Wednesday is totally used up. I do have some time on Thursday. Now, this says no meetings, final exams. Well, guess what? If you email me and say you have a problem and you need help, of course I'm going to answer. And we'll set something up. And it'll be the same thing for next week. I will not be answering emails over this weekend because I have other plans that are going to keep me away, boo-hoo, from doing all of this work. So, um, but next week, um, you, can, you can go ahead and email me and I will find a time when we can meet if you have questions. Now, most of you can just look at your grades and go, well, I just need to turn something in. So from the point of view of a grade, I can just turn in what I did before. And I'll pass, probably even get an A. So that's not really the point. The point is, can you provide the highest quality, most complete, 
industry standard proposal to any future employer or client who might be interested in hiring you. That's really what the benefit of this is. And I'm sure your other professors have told you the same thing about their portfolios or final projects or, or you know, however they've, they've structured. I think some degrees actually require a portfolio class. So, um, so that's, that's, that's generally of use to you. So, so it says no meetings, but you can get with me. So let's go ahead and take a look. Here I've got project one and this page, most of you filled this out, but you might want to look at it and see if you've really got it clear, concise, and nailed. General notes. There, there was nothing to do there, but you might want to go get a copy of general contractor's notes and put them in here or general planning notes. And you could put them in there if you wanted to fill that out. Not required. Proposed use case. Most of you got this right, but now you could do more work here because you've got the calculators to do it with because we did it in project number two okay and you can estimate your existing utilities based on using the calculator for what's already there so you have a better ability for these two now your project zoning we talked about local services you know, we talked about that for both of these, so you can fill this out. Now, your compliance statements, some people didn't fill this one out because I said don't worry about it, but now go back in and get all this done. You can get all this done. And this one, if you put does not, if your proposal is not going to require any federal money, it won't have to use uh, federal funding. But if you plan, you know, it's actually good to use it. But go back and put an X through it. If, if, it, if it didn't belong there, you would put an X through it. To show that it doesn't belong. Okay? So that's something that you could do if you if you wanted to. Okay? So if any of these don't apply, you can do that. Like the CCNRs, that would be a typical one. The other place you can do it instead of doing it on your sheet is to go to here And I think you can do a draw order on these. Uh, maybe not. So that's fine. You can just leave it like that. So you don't need to do those. However, if you wish to, you can. Okay, so if it's not applicable, I expect to see those those gone but you should look up and see is there a local tree commission is there a historical commission is there a local business commission uh, look for your area to see if any exist and then the rest of this you can just cruise through in this case there was one of those there was one of those that was there that was there that was there um, well, I didn't finish this one, but you have everything for it. So then it's just the water plan, the power plan, and the mechanical plan. So there's not a ton of work here. The expectation is you're going to spend six to ten hours this week and two hours 
lots of little study time dur during finals. So you might take 8 to 15 hours over the next two weeks. If you can get it done faster than that, that's okay. But you could really take some time to, to put some effort into making this kind of ultimate submittal really, really excellent. If you go do the other one, let me close a bunch of these down. They're all in a varying degree. So, for instance, here was the different one. We didn't have as much on this one, but you you did have these plants. So that's kind of cool. Also, if you just put these in, you want to be sure that you've got them assigned appropriately to where they came from or go over them and redraw them yourself. Now, I'll talk about the proposed mechanical plan on Thursday. It's really straightforward and simple. And so I'll I'll show you what you'll do on that one. Okay? That's in case you have pumps or blowers on site. And and so that's that's not too hard because I don't think that we did, but you might um, uh, you might want to put in an actual generator or something that follows the new guidelines from from the state of California. <clears throat> you might want to put one of those in. So I'll go over that on Thursday, but that this this could be not required. Also, in which case you can. You can actually put a detail line in. To show that it was left blank on purpose. Okay. And so your third one, which is this one, really has a lot of cool stuff on it but you didn't do a lot of the other work. So you can pull in detail sheets and things like that, but you would have to recreate some of the, and you'll have to kind of make it up what your elevations are. This is all pretty flat. So whatever you put in to make a topo surface, I'll kind of accept. This one probably has the most work unless you just want to use the topo for winding way and just show the drainage on that because this shouldn't change okay so there we go that is your final exam and and what's required any questions at this point Sorry, I had to step away just for a quick second. The mechanical part, you just put an X in there. What was that well, for? So, so I'll go over the mechanical part on, um, on Thursday. On Thursday. So okay. that's if on your site you're going to put pumps, blowers, um, filters, anything that is mechanical. Maybe you're going to put a wind turbine. Or something like that. Any place where there are uh, planned mechanical work. So as an example, you might be putting in um, a large backup generator for the site. Particularly for the innovation center. So you would want to have a building pad for, and, and a little shed for that generator. So you would have to have something like that. Maybe you've got a low-lying area that you want to grade 
and have a sump pump to push the water, you know, out of a low point in the site. If you're doing hamul, you might want to have, um, they, they make like these pressurized um, um, septic systems so that you can do more in a slightly smaller area and you don't have to have quite as good of a perk. So if there's any pump, blower, anything like that, you want to have um, have that ability to, you, to, to put it in. Cool. I would especially think you would want one with the innovation center. Power goes out, you want to you have some sort of backup generation, particularly if it's food service or internet related or anything like that. Cool? Oh, good. Thank you. Cool. Any, that was a good question. Any other questions? Okay, then, then I will stop our recording.